rapid and shock inductions do not exist. The reason they don't exist is because of the precursor that happens before it. You already told the client what's going to happen. Like you just said then, you're going to flop forward. So let me take you through, let me take you through a couple of shock inductions, right? So when we go out tonight and play, I'll prep you now. So when we go tonight, you'll be doing it. My objective was to teach you on top of the, the top of the stratosphere tonight. But if I do it now, then we can just get the fuck on with it and have a beer afterwards. Make sense? Yep. Good. Okay. Uh, Nova. Any any shock induction, any shock induction, <laughs> any shock induction, you have to make sure that the person's safe. Now I do not, I do not agree with dropping people onto the floor. I don't agree with it. It's fucking dangerous. It all depends really, what, 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 in what context. If the, if the gig's on the floor and, you, and they're sat down on the floor, that's fine. But when I see people drop them and then fucking dump them on the floor, firstly, you're not thinking about their safety. Secondly, would you want all your clothes covered in piss and shit? No. Another thing as well is you get these fucking dumb asses doing this thing called, um, called, called the catalepsy where they, they, they board them out, they get two chairs and put them in between. You pop somebody's fucking disc, you're fucked. And in, a, in England, it's illegal to do it. I, if I do a stage show or I do any performance, I am not allowed under the 1952 Act, which is the UK governing law on hypnosis, to do that. We get people doing it and saying, look what I can do. You can do it without fucking hypnosis. You can do it without hypnosis, it's all bullshit. The point is people go, look at this, I've got them to do that. You could do it without, what the fucking hypnosis? You're a fucking retard, that's what it is. Retard. So the thing is, it's like that. Okay, street hypnosis and performance hypnosis, you want to do something that's powerful, that if you are out on the streets, that people can see, right? Where people can see what's going on. Just close your eyes. Do I need to take these What? Do I need to take these off? What, to close your eyes? No, my God. <laughs> <laughs> you can do what the fuck you want, but you don't need to take your glasses off okay. to close your eyes. Now, if I was in a street performance or a performance in environment, how fucking brilliant is that? It's shit. That's boring. That's a boring induction, right? Okay, so open your eyes. Okay, in a moment, I'm going to do a hypnosis induction on you. Okay, and with this hypnosis induction in a moment, your arm's going to come up, it's going to get really, really stiff, and you won't be able to bend it. It'll just feel like metal rod going through your arm, and that's the hypnosis happening. Put your, have you got any shoulder injuries? Put your arm out like so. All I want you to do is just focus, just focus on, your, on that hand now, just feel that hypnosis going through your arm now. Just imagine that getting stiffer and tighter, tighter and stiffer, tighter and stiffer. And as I rotate your hand, just notice that hypnosis going through your eyelids until eventually you just feel that hypnosis just goes through your eyes until eventually you feel your arms get stiff and stiff. In fact, the more you try and bend that now, the more you try and bend it, it gets stiffer and stiffer and stiffer. You'll just notice your arm getting stiffer, feel it getting stiffer. Just imagine it now, if I just do this, and I'm just gonna rock it, and then I'm just gonna let your arm just drop now and sleep deeper, 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 deeper down. Now, it doesn't matter, her arm went stiff, and she's not a very good subject, so I get it. The whole reason, because every time we've done something, I've always noticed it. So I'll always bring people up that aren't doing it. I'm not interested she didn't go into hypnosis, I'm interested that the process worked, and her arm went stiff. Let me just take you through that process again. I explained it, I demonstrated it, I imitated it, performed it. Put your arm out like I say. In a moment, your arm's gonna get stiff. It's gonna feel like a big rebar going through there. Concrete plinth. It's gonna feel like it can't move. It's just gonna go rigid. And the more you focus on the back of your hand, I have hypnosis already. When somebody can't bend their arm, it's hypnosis. The rest is merely theater. Does that make sense when I say there's no such thing? I have hypnosis when you can't bend your arm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Good. Happy days. The one that I showed you yesterday... Look at you wanting to get away. Oh. Go on, you go sit down. No, no. No, go on, you go sit down. No, 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 you do it. You, you, we'll do this in a minute. <laughs> Let me just explain that again. Arm out in front, and I go like this. I'm like, just feel your arm getting stiffer and tighter. In a moment, it's going to happen to you. Put your arm out, and I, you saw me put my hand on the back of hers. Because the, more, the little bit of pressure I put on there prevents her from bending her arm. I felt that. Yeah. And then that, that little roller, just like that. You'll notice on the hand drop, it, on that, oh, sorry, on the, on the stiff arm induction, that I only drop it about that far. When you see people going, fucking whack, 
you are, you are it, 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 it's, the, it's fucking ego, it's stupidity. Because you, if you put somebody's fucking shoulder out, you're not funny, you're not clever, all you're gonna do is just do it. And there is no necessity for it. There is no necessity for nigh on violence to somebody. If you're doing it with somebody who's slight, if you're doing it to somebody who's, who's you know, not got strong shoulder muscles or anything like that, you fucking really hurt them. Or at least tear shoulders and stuff like that. You don't wanna be doing that. And there's no necessity for it. So when I see people doing it, I'm like, you are a fucking idiot. Because all it does, it's better just to go dink like that. Literally that far, dink. That's all it is, like a dunk. There's no necessity to fucking rotate, the, rotate their cuff round. Just dink. John? It's hard for me, it's like, think what happens, so like... So. Okay, well I'll come to that in a minute. I'm just gonna demonstrate these. So the stiff arm induction, out, metal rod, concrete. Stiff as, it's like you cannot bend it. You will not be able to bend it. Some people may do that. It's not their fucking, you've not failed. It's just not their type of induction. If they bend their arm, it just means that it's not their, they, they're not their modality. Like some of you yesterday, we're not stickers and floaters, yeah? Just not your modality. If somebody bends their arm, it's not a failure, just go to another one. Okay. Um, okay, John, in a moment, you're gonna, I'm gonna rub your hands together like so. You're gonna put your hands about six inches in front of you like so. Now, interestingly, I will say this, and it's particularly for ladies, but sometimes you have to get them to just put their arms out like so, because sometimes their, their breast gets in the way, right? And that's all it is. Sometimes you, I just drop their hands like this. It doesn't matter, but sometimes people, you'll see people teaching magnetic hands like this or like this. Sometimes they just do it like this, because if, if you have got, if ladies have got, old men, got big breasts, children, the... Um, Thanks for noticing. <laughs> if they've got if they've got them like that then it just gets in the way it just impedes the hands come together so i've always found just dropping the hands back like little tyrannosaurus rex hands like that but the thing is is if you do that yeah the next thing is rub your hands together like so bring your hands together like this about six inches apart that's it okay just bring your hands together the important thing about this is is about six inches and the reason i say six inches is because what happens then is is that that's not six inches but the thing is is that if, if they was to do this, and as your hands get closer and closer, and closer, fuck closer, whereas if you bring them in close like this, the hypnosis has already happened. Prior to this event, this, the hypnosis has happened. This is merely just the coup d'etat. This is merely just the cherry on the fucking cake. That's all it is. Just imagine looking at a point in the middle of your hands now. Just imagine looking at a point in the middle of your hands. And just notice these two hypnosis magnets. Now, look at my thumb and look at my finger. I'm just going to turn you to the camera. My thumb and my finger. I've used this thumb to push that hand there. I've used this middle finger or a finger in there. Okay, John, just rest your hands. What I want you to do is turn to the person that's next to you or nearest to you, and all I want you to do is push, just do that, and then I want you to try that. One with the thumb and one with the finger, just push, right? And push, not hard that they, you bruise them, but push enough, right, that, that you leave a sensation in their hand. Got it? And then the person who's getting it, just go like that and feel the, feel the sensation in the middle of your hands, then swap over. That's all you're looking for. Can you feel the sensation? Just a subtle sensation. That's all you're looking for. Yeah? There you go. Got it? Yeah, and just let go. Yeah? Feel the sensation in your hands? Like a tingling sensation. Just a sensation, just something different. Yeah? Right. All it's happening there, so let me just explain this. Just put your hands up like this. If I just do this and I put the pressure on like this, and, I, and I've gripped John's hands fairly hard there, and I push really hard the middle. Just feel the hypnosis magnets now, feel it? Mm -hmm. If you push really hard, you leave them with a sensation in their hands, right? Mm -hmm. That sensation, watch this, this is the full way of doing it. I'm pushing, just imagine you've got two hypnosis magnets, two hypnosis magnets in your hand, and those hypnosis magnets are gonna pull together any second now. I've left him with the pressure in his hand, so he now, his hands, he's now got a belief system, fuck, something's really happened. Not, I'm not gonna show you another induction in a moment, that really fucking proves a point. Not 
Carl's just been squeezing my hand, but there's a sensation, just a tingling, a like warmth, just bringing them together. It amplifies what's going on. So what you're doing is, if I just go through that induction again, focus on the point in the middle of your hands. Just imagine, only imagine, two hypnosis magnets pulling your hands together now. Like that. And they actually move towards each other when yeah. you let go. Because mm -hmm. you're pushing them out. Yeah. yeah. So they can I'm putting the tension in, and then he pushes out, and then they come back together. And then the sensation you've left by digging your finger and your thumb in acts as like a, shit, there's something fucking happening. Yeah. It's not. It's a little mercury. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's magnetic hands. So you can do that. They're great ones to use. Stiff arm magnetic hands. The hand take one. Uh, John. Me? Yeah, prop your phone up if you want. Then I'll show you one in a moment that just... You know, me. There we go. Did you put any pressure on the back? When you're yeah, you can do, yeah. The on the palm. But nothing, just... No, 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 just pushing like that. Yeah, when we break in a minute, you, when, when you break in a moment, you'll be able to play with that one. So, cool. About an hour's time. Then we'll go for lunch and then knock off and then we'll meet at six. Right, uh, next one. Hand up, like so. Just keep focused, keep focused, keep focused. Notice how I'm just bringing his hand above his eye line. When I did that eye fixation with you a minute ago, I overextended her eye, her eye, as in it right into the back of the socket. What I'm doing here is, is just pushing it even harder, so when he's doing it, he's gonna blink. He's naturally gonna blink now. There you go. And then that hypnosis just hits the top of your eyelids. No, just imagine, only imagine. Did you just see what I did then? As his hand was up and my hand was here, I noticed him blink, I noticed him blink, and then when he did that, and his eye went, I just let go, and there was a subtle drop, and it goes ding. Like that. And you'll sometimes see people stay in that cataleptic, catalepsy being the looseness or the rigidity of muscle groupings. And you see it in stiff arm induction, stiff catalepsy. Then you get the uh, eye lock induction, where they're just literally, that's, Eye catalepsy, when you get the eye and the muscle groupings around the eyes to go loose, limp, and lazy, stiff and loose. So, catalepsy works in a different way, so that's the way to do it. And he'll stay there forever and a day. But that one there is something you have to practice. You come in, and as you're coming in, you rotate the hand round and take it above their eye line, not too much that you fucking give them a rotator cuff injury and you break the neck, but enough to take it over, overcook it, and put your finger just there. Once you've got them into that position, hold it and push up there, and then when you see it, you'll know it. You'll see it, you'll see the, like that. When you see that, that roll back, that roll in the eye, just drop the, just drop. Remove your fingers and thumbs, you could dink like that. You watch them just go like that, they'll do exactly that. So, so far you've got maggy fingers, stiff arm, magnetic hands, Hand tape, that's one to practice. That's one when we're out tonight, you'll be doing this. In, rotate and up. In, rotate and up. That's all you do. Because it can be cack-handed. And if you've noticed, I've changed sides to what my, the, the clients have normally been on. Because it's easier for me for my right hand to work this way. So you've got to figure that out, okay? Just allow all that pressure and tension to leave your body and allow your arm to float down there and just do that. Good. Happy days. Brilliante. Okay. When you're ready, just open your eyes to feel brand new. We've got plenty of time to do this. Good. I feel absolute amazing energy flooding through your body. You go take a seat. Okay, I'm, not gonna, I'm just gonna do another induction, which is really, really fun. Just need to adjust the camera. Big fella, do you want to come up here? Okay, take a seat. Take a seat. Okay, this is not a rapid or shock. I'm not going to say nothing now. I will explain afterwards what I've done because otherwise I don't want to imprint something, yeah? Okay, all I want you to do is bring your hand up. Bring this hand up. You got any injuries? No, this one will do. Okay, all I want you to do now is focus on your hand. Just focus on your hand, just keep focused on your hand, keep focused on your hand. Keep focus, keep focus, keep focus, keep focus. And all I want you to do now is just imagine, only imagine now, that hypnosis building up in your hand now. Just imagine that hypnosis building up in your hand now. Just imagine. You'll probably feel it now, can you feel it? Starting to build up? 
for any pressure or tension or, or maybe even just a little bit of lightness growing in there now. Just imagine it now. Just imagine that there. Just keep focused on that point, keep focused. But you may feel the hypnosis now flood down your arm, into the back of your neck, over the top of your head. No, just imagine, only imagine now. That hypnosis, you probably felt it then flooding down. And as that hypnosis just goes through your arm, into the back of your neck and make your eyes blink. No. And eventually your arm gets heavier, taking you further and deeper into your hypnosis now. I've got hypnosis. The eyelids are merely just there now. Does that make sense? Good, and just release it, no. I don't need, I have hypnosis, I know that. That's not, oh, I've got hypnosis because he's there. I've got, look, have you seen what I've said? Let your arm go and he's already stuck there with catalepsy. There. It, just because his eyelids were open, sorry, because his eyes were open does not mean that I did not have hypnosis, all right? And your arm's free now. Let me just go through that induction now. That's a radial pulse induction, right? Never heard of it before, have you? I can feel my... The radial pulse. Yeah. So what I did is I went, put your arm up like so, grabbed his hand as though I'm supporting him. But actually, I'm cutting off the circulation to his hand. Yeah. I'm pre pressing on his radial pulse just here. Why would I do that? Because at the moment, as I'm holding his hand and cutting off the circulation, just focus on your hand and feel the hypnosis happening. And as you feel it, belief and expectation. You'll probably feel the hypnosis flow down your arm in a minute and hit the back of your head and come over the top. And that hypnosis will happen now. And as I release the pulse, the blood shoots down the arm. Guess what happens? That must be hypnosis. And your arm's free now. Belief and expectation. That came out of a salad, that did. No, it didn't. It came out of a drinking exercise, actually. Yeah, good. Go sit down, mate. But the radial pulse one is about them putting their arm up and you cutting off the circuit, just using those two fingers there, just to hold it. You're not gripping it. You'll just put, you can feel it going bump, 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 bump. And then you'll feel it going bump, 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 like that. And then the next minute, when you just watch their eyes and they're focusing, all you're doing, letting go. Explain to them that the hypnosis is gonna travel down their arms. And as it lets go, and you feel that hypnosis now. And as I say now, I drop it. And then they get that rush of blood coming up the arm. And their belief is that is really hypnosis traveling up their arm. That's all you're doing. That's a fun one to fuck with your doctor with. Yeah, yeah. I used to put a tennis ball in my arm pit. <laughs> and the first and thing they're gonna do is send a chick to take yeah, the yeah, yeah. And squeeze the tennis ball and there is no pulse and they're sitting there like and then they start freaking and calling the doctor and I've I have i have seen that <laughs> I've seen somebody do that on, on the SWAT teams, on firearms teams. Had blood had blood pressure had high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. And he literally just got he got like it, it went a ball, but I, it was something of that size. And he squeezed it in there, and they did all the bits and bobs, and, and he held it in there. And then literally, when they put it on there, he just squeezed really tight, dropped it all the way down, and then came out and went, I need a fag, I need, need a smoke, sorry, I need a smoke. He felt like fucking hell. Jesus Christ. The, by the way, fag in England means cigarette, for yeah. those people who didn't know that. Yes, yeah, so when you say you can get rid of fags, it doesn't mean anything else except that. It just means cigarettes. It's our terminology for cigarette. I have been picked up for that before, where I've said, oh, you know, oh, people go, do you want a cigarette break? Yeah, we'll go out for a fag. People seem to take it the wrong way. I'm explaining to you, it's English for cigarette. Um, so, stiff arm, maggy fingers, hand take induction. Um, they all, they're all just mechanics. If I, whatever you do, whether it be like when I did the Gatorade yesterday, I've already built up that. So the last one is, hey, little fella, big fella, come here. The coup d'etat, the one that everyone wants. Sit down. Okay, in a moment, you're gonna put your hand on top of my hand, right? You're gonna push down as hard as you can, all right? And then what's gonna happen is, is that you're gonna push it down and then you're gonna feel a jolt and go deep into hypnosis. Ready? Right. I want you to watch how much I drop my hand. Go on, push, no push, 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 no push, no push with the other. See, deeper, 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 deeper. It was about that far. See, I'd already told him what he was going to do. The rest was, the rest was just theatrics. And just go deeper and deeper down now.
And as I just touch your hand, you'll always notice, I'll always say to somebody, I'm now about to touch your hand. I'm just going to touch his hand. If I just bring this up like this and put that on top of there, just imagine, only imagine now that your hand is stuck down, glued down, like it's never been done before onto the top of your head. The more you try and pull it off, the funnier it becomes. Three, two, one, just open your eyes. Good. And just really attempt that now. And just imagine this itch on the end of your nose right now. There you go. And it gets itchier and itchier now. You can scratch, there you go. <laughs> and the more you scratch it, the itchier it becomes. There it is. Fuck <laughs> 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 Always remember when you're doing any straight or street stage comedy, or anything like that, conflict causes comedy. So at the moment, he can't use his other hand and he's doing this. So when he scratches his nose now, when he does that, then, it, then, then all of a sudden he'll, he'll just do that. But if he, hit, if he scratches it again now, what happens is, is that it just starts to, can you, you get, yeah, there you go. Good, and now you're released and the itch is gone. Now the interesting thing is if you want to do it, just imagine that you're glued down, stuck down to that chair now. Go on, go sit down. Oh, I'm the fucking star of this show. Piss off up to the back there. Go on in. Yeah. This is what you're now going to do. You're going to have fun, ethical fun. Stick people to chairs. Stick their hands on top of their head. Stick their hand on their ass. If you want to, ethically, you could do this. Is that that chair now is going to become like a roller coaster chair, and it's going to vibrate. And as it vibrates, you're going to hear this noise. And when you hear that noise, it'll just vibrate like it's never vibrated before. So the key thing is, is that, is that feel that? Yeah. Watch this. I'm going to intensify it. Is that weird? Yeah. Good lad. I'm going to stop it there before you enjoy it too much. <laughs> Stand up. Good. But the idea is, is doing conflict, having that conflict. He's like that. Can I sit back down? <laughs> but the point being is, is that if you're doing any street or stage, is if you do it in Fremont Street, nobody's going to understand your skit. I found over the years you can get people to do skits, and people in Fremont Street, that they're all they're all like everyone's mad up Fremont Street anyway, so it doesn't fucking matter. They're all doing funky things. But if you saw that video I put up the other day where people are doing this and then they're going down and then falling into hypnosis. That's a crowd pleaser. Believe it or not, you don't have to do a lot to do a crowd pleaser. Just dropping people into hypnosis and doing the whole holding. But I'll go through that later on. But the point being is, is that you don't have to do a lot to perform in hypnosis. The other thing as well about street, street performances, it's great for this, and I'll utilise the footage, but it doesn't serve me a purpose. The only purpose it serves me is confidence. That's the only thing it does. Being in a very, if you can hypnotize on Fremont Street or at the top of the strat, a thousand foot up in the air, then you can hypnotize anywhere. That's the point of doing it. There is no actual value. And of course, as well, if we look at the contraindications of, of when we shouldn't hypnotize, and that lesson's basically in, in your online training that you'll get narcolepsy, bipolar disorders, personality disorders, schizophrenia, the big ones that I wouldn't work with. You're out, you're out there and you never fucking know what you're going to come up against. How are you going to deal with a reaction? How are you going to deal with somebody having a moment, somebody going into hypnosis and all of a sudden having a complete and utter breakdown? They may have just had a massive bereavement in their family. You don't know. You, haven't done, you don't know what you're doing. So you always have to be very, very cautious in what you're doing anyway. Hence why I've stepped away from a lot of street. You know, I still, I, I'll do it anywhere. I'll do it in a fucking bar. I'll go to Chick Pete's downstairs and do, don't bother me. But as I've gone... As I've grown up, uh, the, uh, the necessity and the severity of your actions of doing it are there. You know, and, and I always say this to people. One of my first ever agony aunt messages, and this is one thing I'm going to stress to you guys for tonight. One of the first agony messages I had to ever do in the police was a, um, which is a, a message of you're going around somebody's house to tell them something's gone wrong, was... Um, was a guy that had been in a kebab shop, and I watched the video for it. He went into a kebab shop, and there was a queue. There was a queue, there was a queue there. And he'd gone in, 
and he's like standing there just doing this. And you can see he's actively looking at the board, like he's had too many to drink. And he's thinking, what kebab am I going to have next? You know, I'm going to have this out there. And somebody takes umbrage that he's jumped in front of a few people. But you can see this guy going, no, 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 I'm just looking at the menu. And this guy came out, bang, hits him. It wasn't the punch that killed him. It was as he fell backwards, he smacked his head on a fucking, on a concrete bollard. And it severed, his, it severed the, the, the spinal column. So he wasn't, he wasn't, he was, get this right, he was physically dead, but not brain dead. There's two types of dead, I never realised this. There's physically, and then there's brain as well. There was still activity going on in his brain. It just was not going any further down here. So the time had cut, his, he was not going anywhere. He was, they, all he had to do next was just take the tube out. And the other thing as well is, is that what I learned from that is, is that, is that when you're fucking about and you see these idiots dropping people on the floor or they're doing stuff like that, they're not thinking about the consequences. They will happily injure somebody and walk off some of these fuckers. Same as Taser, the Thomas A. Swift electric rifle. I used to be one of the top people for Thomas A. Swift, for the Taser in the UK many years ago. I was like a single point of contact or failure as some people said. But the thing is, is that I was a single point of contact for Taser. Taser itself, when it's fired, if you don't know, the yellow bumblebee is named after a NASA scientist, developed it after watching a magazine, reading a magazine called Thomas A. Swift Electric Rifle. So that was an old comic where a man would turn up with an electric gun, stun him and wait for the police to turn up. A kid would shoot the guys with an electric gun, stun them, wait for the police to turn up and then they would, he would, that was the hero part. And a NASA guy knew that, so he turned it into what you now see, the yellow and black bumblebee that you see that fires out. 50,000 volts over, um, over, oh my God, what's the rotation on that? Anyway, it, it fires, um, fires 50,000 volts and fires at 0 0.003 of an amp. Now the key thing about Taser is, is that Taser itself has never killed anyone. Because it's not the amps that kill you, it's, uh, sorry, it's not, it's not the voltage that kills you, it's the amps that kill you. So the volts are 50,000, but the amperage is 0 0.0003. <laughs> So it's negligible, to be quite honest, you know, for the amperage that's going free, you can get more off of fucking flip-flops and a carpet. It's not taser that kills, it's what happens when you taser somebody. Funny enough, people say, how do you draw the conclusion between taser and catalepsy? When you get hit by that thing, you get what's called neuromuscular incapacitation. Catalepsy. It, it, it is catalepsy, stiff and rigidity of a muscle grouping. Yes, it's being forced on the person, but they get hit by a taser and their muscle groups all clench up and then they fall. It's when they fall and smash their head on furniture. So when I see people, these people what we call, in the military, used to do what's called a five and 20 meter check. I'm not asking you to do a five and 20 meter check, but that comes through my head. If I'm working with somebody, I will move them away from them desks. I'll move them away. So if I am standing up, I'll move anything out of the way. So I've got a clear line of sight that if something does go wrong, I will break my fucking arm first. But if something goes wrong and I can't handle it, then they're not gonna hit anything except just slump down on the floor. I, will, uh, I risk assess all the time. And some people don't bother with the risk assessment. They just go, fuck off, bleh, I've hypnotized them. That's what they do. You see them on the videos, they're fucking idiots. No care whatsoever except their own ego and you see them on the fucking videos. Yeah, you, you fucking prats. So yeah, so that's the key thing there, is that about safety. And some people may say, well, ah, fuck it, you're just a killjoy. When you've delivered messages to people and their families before because of incidents like that, then it changes your perspective slightly. Because then you've got to, you know, if you've never done that, then you never appreciate it. If you've never watched a family completely and utterly break down just because their son's just severed his fucking spinal column because of some stupid prick, then guess what? I've done that. So the key thing is, Safety. Tonight when we're working, there'll be three, you'll be all working in threes. We are gonna get more people to come with us. I'm gonna punt it up so you've got more faces, more videos, more stuff. So I'm gonna invite more people along, but you're my core and I will talk to them, but however, we will be working as a group and you'll be working in threes. And in those threes, one's gonna be a cameraman person. One's gonna be a camera person. The other two's gonna, one's gonna be a hypnotist, one's gonna be a hypnotist. And I will teach you when we get to the strap what we're going to do and how we're going to do it. And you're going to leave it, you're going to leave it with fucking great footage.
great footage you can punt up, put it on social media and say, look, I've been to Las Vegas and I've done this. So for tonight, because we're now going to practice for the next 40 minutes, just the inductions. I want you to practice all those inductions. Tonight, if you can, get your phone fully charged. And secondly, um, no, that's it really. Just need your phone charged, to be brutally honest, and just come out in something, you know, just that you're comfortable in wearing, really. Uh, and then tonight, just we'll just pick victims as we go. Um, you know, it's just, just a bit of fun tonight, really. But I want you to go through all the inductions now, so when we get to the strap tonight, you're straight on it. What I'm going to be doing... Oh, that was the other thing as well. If you can, get a thing on your phone called CapCut. C-A-P-C-U-T. CapCut. It's a video editing suite. And tonight, you're going to be putting um, videos together, and then I'm going to show you how to edit them tomorrow afternoon. All right? You're going to be able to... So then you're self-sufficient to go away. Then you can... Rec tomorrow... I want you to have your phones charged again, so when you're here tomorrow, I would like you to record a session with somebody and just go through it. So you may, you may go, at the end. I want you to post it. If you go back to my YouTube channel with some of the shite I posted 12 years ago, I look at it now and I go, oh, fucking Jesus Christ. Now, now I'm like, but that was, that was where I started. Those shit videos have given me enough energy to get going, you know what I mean? So I just leave them on there. Years ago, I used to think I'll delete them, but now I just leave them because it's all, all part and parcel of what you're doing. So, we're gonna go practice now, uh, all of the, the shock inductions. Make sure we do the safety, safety checks first, make sure if you do the hand drop induction. And don't forget the copper pinch. If you are standing up, use the copper pinch. And if you are gonna stand up, stand on the carpet in the middle of the corridor and do it that way. So if there isn't something going on, at least they're on something soft, they're gonna go down on something soft, yeah? Um, but the copper pinch, and if you're gonna do it, you hold them with the copper pinch like push, 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 down. Literally, just one inch, not even half an inch, down. Oh, one top tip. If you're doing this and you're pushing your hand down and they put their hand down and grab yours, get them to stop it. All you need is fingertips. All you need is the tips, just like that, yeah? To push, 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 sleep. They'll fucking drop. All right? If you think they're gonna drop, Give them the pre-suggestion of, you've got two concrete, you've got concrete bollards going through your legs, metal rods going through your legs, so then they just stand upright. But be prepared, they may drop. Yeah? And then, what, give it about another, give it, we'll, we'll meet back in here at 10-2. Yeah? And practice, practice and practice all of those things there. Keep going through it and doing stuff. Yeah? One, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, four. Damn. It's all right. Ready? Let's go. So we're doing this in threes now.